All right, let's bring you this in the meantime. This week, President Cyril Ramaphosa and five other leaders from African countries are heading all the way to Russia and Poland. It's all part of the African Peace Initiative regarding the Ukraine war. Participants include President of the Comoros Islands and current AU President, that's Othman Ghazali, President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah El Sisi, President of Senegal, Macky Sall, uh, President of Uganda, Yoweri Museveni, Zambian President, Hakainde Hichelema. So you see where I'm going with this. African heads of state uh, heading all the way to Russia and Poland. But our senior reporter, ENC's Avi Mdila, will be joining the presidency on this mission. And he joins me now just to unpack its relevance and what we can expect from this trip. Avi, a pleasure having you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Tamela. I mean, let's talk about the importance of this mission. Why is it so significant? So, Tamela, for the African continent, more than anything, it's um, that being seen to pursue actively peace uh, in the conflict between Ukraine and Russia. I understand that there's been a lot of pressure put on African countries uh, to choose one side or the other. So this is going to be important in sort of shielding the African continent uh, and not being drawn directly into one or the other side. For example, mm -hmm. if you look at the countries that are going there, for example, they come from different regions in the African continent. You have uh, Zambia, which is seen closer to the Ukraine stance. You have uh, Uganda, for example, that is seen being closer to the Russian stance. So it's countries that have different uh, stances on the Ukraine conflict itself. For example, Senegal uh, is choosing not to be drawn towards it, but it's closer to the uh, you know Western stance in mm. all of this. And Egypt and South Africa are on the same both of while not being aligned uh, to any of the conflict and wanting peaceful means, they've actually been uh, accused of being actually closer to the Russian stance, for example, in Egypt, um, allowing the airspace of Russian travel to still continue, mm. just like South Africa, where there was that controversy around Lady R and us providing weapons to the, you know, the, to, the, to Russia themselves. So this mission itself is very important in showing some sort of unity. You understand, for example, in the United Nations, uh, Africa has the biggest voting bloc, so it shows that sort of unity, even though we may not agree in the Russian-Ukraine stance itself. It shows unity in terms of wanting peaceful resolution uh, to the conflict itself. In fact, it's a conversation I had with uh, Pilani Mtembu from the Institute of Global Dialogue. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. What African countries are trying to sort of avoid is, is the continent, is this conflict being another source of division, you know, within the deliberations uh, of the African Union. And that can easily happen because there's been a lot of pressure applied uh, towards African countries uh, to pick a side uh, in this uh, conflict. I mean, uh, Western diplomats have been relentless, you know, in, in terms of um, uh, trying to activate their networks on the African continent and trying to sway uh, countries. And I think this initiative certainly is, is, is trying to shield uh, the continent from that. So if Africa is seen to be, yes, a player in this, but not a player that exacerbates, you know, the divisions, um, because the reality is that the continent is the largest uh, grouping within the uh, UN General Assembly. So our votes are coveted uh, right now. So there's a lot of courting uh, of, 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 of Africa within the UN General Assembly and in other multilateral uh, organizations. And in the absence of a common African position on this conflict, you know, which I would argue this would have been the best way for the continent to actually navigate uh, this, this, the, this geopolitical landscape that's filled with a lot of tension, is to actually forge a common African position. So what's then the importance of South Africa leading this mission? So you understand that uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, the president, of course, is uh, the one actively pursuing this mission, gathering up these heads of state, and, of course, going, um, now we understand, to Poland, to the two countries, Ukraine and Russia. Very important for South Africa, especially against the criticism that we've uh, had of recent time, uh, the doubting of our non-aligned stance, especially, I mentioned just a bit earlier on, that incident with Lady R, those allegations coming from the U.S. ambassador that uh, we provided, you know, weapons uh, to Russia. So it's, 
important, for example, you understand that this has been months in planning. Uh, you have the engagements with both countries. That mm -hmm. shows that both of these countries are open to Africa. In fact, don't see Africa as a threat, but more so South Africa, given that they are the BRICS counterparts of Russia. So to engage Ukraine, for example, is very crucial and important uh, in that non-aligned stance that reaffirms it. In fact, that stance, uh, you know, it shows that, for, for example, non-aligned to war itself, but more aligned to peace. In fact, um, just to get clarity on this stance itself, let's listen to President Sol Ramaphosa speak on it. Now, also witnessing Africa being dragged into conflicts far beyond our own borders. Some countries, including our own, are being threatened with penalties for pursuing an independent foreign policy and for adopting a position of non-alignment. South Africa has not been and will not be drawn into a contest between global powers. We will maintain our position on the peaceful resolution of conflicts wherever those conflicts occur. So, Avi, I mean, with the BRICS summit coming up, I think sometime in August, uh, do you think leaders will be able to convince Putin uh, not to come, given that warrant of arrest by the ICC? You'd expect that it's some of the deliberations, of course, that will happen in Russia with President Putin, but you'd expect that the Russian delegations themselves will be doing their own scenario planning. Uh, although it's most likely that he won't be arrested, for example, if he is to come to South African soil, but it will be some sort of embarrassment, for example. So they'll be mitigating those issues um, and possibly send a delegation with the prime minister or someone higher up instead of sending uh, President Putin. Well, those are the suggestions from some of the experts that I've been uh, speaking to on the ground. But of course, there is that ICC uh, issue. We are signatories of the Rome Statute that uh, suggests that we understand that uh, President Putin um, has a warrant of arrest mm. for the war crime allegedly in Ukraine. So we are mandated the moment that he comes into the country, we're supposed to arrest President Putin. But let's take a listen to Pilani Mtembu uh, from the Institute of Global Dialogue, just on his sentiments around uh, what may happen. Can either, you know, have President Putin here, but um, basically ignore the arrest warrant, um, because, I mean, I don't think it's realistic to think that South Africa would arrest a, a president of a nuclear uh, uh, state, you know, uh, such as Russia. Uh, it's not really realistic. Um, in legal terms, yes, that might be the obligation. But in reality, I doubt that that would happen. The other option is what you are saying is sort of, you know, persuading uh, pre President Putin to not necessarily come, uh, yes, to be invited, but for whatever reasons, you know, because he's commanding uh, the special military operation um, and then the Ukrainian counteroffensive or whatever reasons that are found, you know, that uh, President Putin uh, skips, you know, this particular uh, summit. But I do think anyway, skipping it will diminish the weight of uh, of this particular summit because it's the first one since the pandemic that is taking place physically. And I think it would have provided an, an opportunity uh, to take some of the concerns from all of the BRICS countries uh, towards Russia in terms of what impact this conflict is having as you continue to prolong it. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's it, it's really a, a tough one, but I think it will be both South Africa maybe trying to convince, but on the other side, Russia probably assessing and saying maybe it is in our interest. So is South Africa then likely to face any consequences in August um, should Putin come into the country? Well, definitely it will upset a number of countries and a number of people. For mm. example, those 125 odd signatories of the Rome Statutes uh, would be upset if uh, uh, President Putin is not arrested in the country. But not only in that, uh, even in the country, there will be people, of course, civil society organizations that will be uh, upset by it, but also the economic consequences. Uh, we do a lot of trade with Western countries, uh, the US, uh, the European countries, um, but there are experts, in fact, that suggest that that economic uh, 
uh, consequence might not be a prolonged uh, economic consequence? Because it is, of course, in the benefit, for example, for the European countries that trade with South Africa and have a lot of investments um, in South Africa itself. But it's a conversation, in fact, that I had with Professor Zondi in terms of what will happen if uh, President Putin is not arrested at the BRICS summit, if he is indeed to come here. Let's take a listen to that. If South Africa um, decides to um, go on with this and, and, uh, and, and, and not arrest Putin when he comes to South Africa, um, the, the first consequence is that it will um, damage South Africa's standing in relation to the rule of law, um, especially in the eyes of South Africans themselves because then they would have violated the South African law. Uh, the second thing is that it would damage his standing as a member of the ICC. And therefore, before the 124, 25 members of the ICC, South Africa would have acted uh, incorrectly. I hear that it might also damage its relations with those who are not members of the ICC, like the United States. Uh, like or they are not members of the ICC. Um, the, the United States has also said that it will never allow any U.S. citizen to be charged by the ICC. So um, it can decide to do its game, not on the basis of principle, but because it is swaying its power and can undermine South Africa's economic relations. But the real danger is with the South African public and with the membership of the ICC. And everybody else are hypocrites that can also um, seek to damage it, but for reasons that have nothing to do with international law or with uh, fairness internationally, but because they have power. All right, ENC senior reporter, Vivian Mtila, thank you so much uh, for this uh, conversation. As our African heads of state head out to uh, Russia and Poland, Avi will, will be on top of those developments.